I read more books, so I'm gonna wrap up more books. It's 74 through, through 80, I think I'm doing. 74 and 75 were two more Sammy Keys books. Uh, who would have thought I'm still reading Sammy Keys? Middle grade detective series that I have so much fun with. I read Sammy Keys and the Dead Giveaway, which is about Sammy getting a dog walking job and there are people getting kicked out of their homes for city ordinances. And that one was okay. I think I gave it three stars. Um, but the next one I really liked, it's probably my favorite Sammy Keys book that I've read so far. It is Sammy Keys and the Wild Things. Sammy goes on this camping trip with a Girl Scout troop and they're searching for endangered condors. And I loved the camping wildlife aspect of it. I used to be a Girl Scout. This book has a lot of Casey, who is like the love interest of this series. And I just love him so much. Sammy is like 13 years old and it's super chaste and like it's not even really a romance. Like they're not really dating. They've never even kissed but like you can tell that they like each other. I'm obsessed with them and this book made me really happy and I just really like this series and yeah I gave that one four stars. I'm more than halfway done with this series now and I'm going to be sad when it's over. The next book that I read was Holes by Lewis Satcher. I basically consider this to be a modern classic at this point. It's the story of Stanley Yelnats. He gets sent to Camp Green Lake, a prison alternative, and he has to dig holes all the time and it's just the greatest story ever told. I love this book. It's just one of my favorite stories ever and I gave it five stars because it's so good. It's perfect. Honestly, this book has no flaws. Please read it. Next I read What I Was by Meg Rossoff. An old man is telling the tale of his childhood and it goes back to I think around the 60s and he is a student at a that's a tongue twister. A prestigious boarding school for boys. He befriends this other boy who does not go to the school and is basically a social outcast and lives in this little hut completely by himself and the protagonist really becomes obsessed with this other boy. It's interesting. It's a fascinating study of their dynamic and their characters. I really liked the writing in this book. I think that's definitely the strongest aspect. There were so many lines that I had to stop and think about because they really needed to settle in my mind. I could just like find so much meaning in so many of the lines and the descriptive language was so beautiful. The setting is one of my favorite types of atmospheres. It's a foggy, cold seaside captured so beautifully. It's beautiful, but it has like this mysterious air to it. I really really like that about this book. The ending is weird and it's kind of ambiguous. There are just so many lines that you can read multiple ways and it's... I don't know. It, the ending made me feel very complicated thoughts and I, I don't even know. But overall I thought that the story was interesting and the writing was beautiful enough on its own for me to just love the book and I ended up giving it four stars. Next I read The Ruby and the Smoke by Philip Pullman. This is the first book in the Sally Lockhart series which is a young adult mystery series. At the very beginning of the book her father dies and so she's left all alone and she basically finds out about this mysterious secret society, suspicious things surrounding her father's death, things kind of snowball from there. It is historical fiction. I think it takes place sometime in the 1800s. I know it's a pretty broad span of time, but I don't remember when exactly this takes place. It's in London, I believe. I liked the writing of this book. I liked Sally as a character, but nothing totally blew me away about this. I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I just found myself kind of zoning out and it got a little bit confusing at times, but it wasn't super hard to follow. This almost reads like a middle grade, but some of the content is a little bit more adultish. There's a lot of drug use, uh, surprisingly. I can definitely see this be triggering for people who are addicts. But overall, I gave it three stars. It was pretty enjoyable. Next I'm going to talk about The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. So this is a super popular thriller mystery. It follows this woman named Rachel who is 
an alcoholic and spends a lot of her time on the train and she is always looking out the window and kind of watching this particular family. The wife in this couple that she watches goes missing and she inserts herself into the mystery of what happened. I had kind of high expectations. I just did not find this to be very enjoyable. I feel like most of the reviews I read said things like, the characters are awful, this is true, the characters are very dislikable. I didn't really find an issue with disliking the characters so much because in a thriller where everyone is kind of a suspect for murder, it makes a lot more sense for characters to be dislikable. It felt like it was making a statement about men and women in general that all women have these negative traits and all men have these negative traits. I was, like, I was like, why are you making those comments about society and like what does that accomplish? I... okay. I definitely found myself cringing so hard because Rachel, the protagonist, just does the dumbest stuff over and over and over and... Uh, it was not fun to read about. It was very uncomfortable. I didn't really find the mystery to be that compelling. It was not really pushing the story forward for me. I thought that there was going to be a twist ending and to me there was no twist. It was just like this is what happened and I was like okay that's a normal explanation for it to me. <laughs> there wasn't a lot that I liked here. So I gave it two stars. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I just, I don't know. Eh, eh, eh. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about is Feed by M.T. Anderson. This is a futuristic kind of dystopian novel. Most people have this thing called the feed implanted in their brains and it's basically your brain is the internet and you can talk to people through it without physically speaking. You have all information imaginable just downloaded into your head. It's basically a tool for capitalism to feed into people's brains and your life is one big advertisement to buy more things. It's written in an extremely stylized language and it uses all this made up futuristic slang and it's super like teenagery talk and it's just kind of a stream of consciousness type narrative. This book will throw you off at first and it really wasn't until about halfway through that I started getting used to the language and really starting to like it but once I did I ended up getting really into the story. The main character Titus meets this girl Violet and they start dating and she comes from a different background from him and she kind of opens up his eyes to so many different things about the world and it was such a fascinating thing to me. I really, really liked Violet as a character. Their relationship was really interesting to me. It had really touching moments and you could tell that they really cared about each other. But then there were other times where they were really awkward and they didn't know how to connect and they would fight and have a normal teenage relationship where things were not working out. I just, I really liked it and the ending of this book threw me completely by surprise and it made me really emotional and I cried a lot and I did not expect to do that with this book. If you start this and you really hate it, I would say push through it because I found myself loving it. I think that there's a lot that can reward you with this book if you dedicate yourself to it. Sometimes I wanted more world building. There's really no hand holding at all. It just throws you in there. I get why it was like that and it was a really interesting choice. I ended up giving this four and a half out of five stars. Apparently this is a book that's taught in schools a lot, but I never read it, so. It also has like this really cool spot UV on the cover that you can't see from far away, but then you yeah, it's cool. So those are those books. That's all I have to say about that. Goodbye.